Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Asha Williams, a chemical engineer and researcher at Cornell University. There is a lot of misinformation circulating about COVID-19 mRNA vaccines, so I'm going to clear the air on some of these myths. In no particular order, I'll be discussing 12 of the most popular ones I've heard. Not here to debate, I'll just be discussing facts based on currently available data. So, let's get into it. Myth number one, we can't trust COVID-19 vaccines because they were rushed. These vaccines were developed in record time, so there's understandably some concern, but there are several factors that contributed to the speed of development. Let's discuss. Scientists have known about the coronavirus, aka COV, family of viruses since the 1960s. Yes, viruses come in families. The first human coronavirus was introduced into the population back in 2002. Remember SARS, then MERS? Research was started back then to develop vaccines against coronaviruses. And this knowledge was applied to the current coronavirus for COVID-19 vaccine design. The COVID-19 vaccines produced by Pfizer and Moderna are the first mRNA vaccines to complete all stages of clinical trial and be licensed for use. But the technology has been around for a while, about three decades. Human trials of cancer vaccines using this same mRNA technology have been happening since at least 2011. If there was a real problem with the technology, we would have seen it before now. Another factor was the rapid enrollment of vaccine trial participants, over 70,000 persons for Moderna and Pfizer trials combined. This speed of enrollment is somewhat unprecedented, but skyrocketing cases of COVID-19 meant that it only took a few months for the clinical trials to collect enough data to evaluate the safety and efficacy of the vaccines. Lastly, the devastating impact of the pandemic caused many companies, governments, and researchers around the world to work together and invest more than ever before into vaccine research. Speed of development does not mean that safety or ethics around the vaccine were compromised in any way. Myth number two, the vaccine will give me COVID-19. COVID-19 mRNA vaccines do not contain a live virus or carry a risk of causing disease in a vaccinated person. mRNA from the vaccine simply teaches cells in our body how to make a harmless piece of the spike protein or S protein, which sticks out in every direction from the surface of the coronavirus. This is the specific protein used by the virus to invade human cells and is actually just one of the 29 proteins that make up the structure of the coronavirus. The spike protein trains our immune system, so if we do encounter the virus, we'll have an immune army waiting to attack it. Vaccines help you stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Not on my watch. Not on my watch. Having side effects like muscle aches or a fever after vaccination is normal with any vaccine and is just a sign that your immune system is responding. It does not mean that you are in any way contagious to other people. You cannot develop COVID-19 from the vaccine. Myth number three. We don't know what's in these vaccines. We actually do know. Pfizer and Moderna have published a full ingredient list for their vaccines. So uh, let's do a quick Google search. And boom, they both contain the star ingredient, highly purified messenger RNA or mRNA. Instead of injecting virus particles, the mRNA provides instructions for our bodies to make the coronavirus spike protein that will create an immune response. Next, fats, aka lipids, which protect the fairly delicate mRNA molecules and help deliver them to cells, sort of like tiny greasy bubbles around the mRNA to help it slide inside our cells. And lastly, salts and sugar, natural products to help keep the vaccine stable and hold the pH and salt levels close to that of our bodies. So the injection will be more comfortable when we receive it. And that's it. Period. The COVID-19 mRNA vaccines do not contain a live or whole coronavirus, microchips, tracer technology, fetal tissue, stem cells, mercury, aluminum, luciferase, the mark of the beast, pork products, or preservatives. Myth number four. The COVID-19 vaccine causes Bell's palsy. You may have seen this image and others like it circulating on social media claiming that COVID-19 vaccines cause a condition known as Bell's palsy, a temporary facial muscle weakness or paralysis due to facial nerve damage. Bell's palsy can strike anyone at any age. The exact cause of it is unknown, but it has been linked to herpes simplex and risk factors like diabetes and lung infections. A few cases of Bell's palsy were reported in COVID-19 vaccine trials, but it has not been concluded that they were caused by vaccination. Bell's palsy is actually more frequent in the general population than the frequency reported in the Pfizer and Moderna COVID-19 vaccine trials. Four persons out of 40,000 is even less than what we'd expect to see if we took 40,000 people from the street and observed them for three months, independent of a COVID-19 vaccine. 
The FDA will continue to monitor for any new cases or reports of Bell's palsy in larger vaccinated populations, but it's currently not considered a side effect or reaction to the vaccine, as there is no clear basis for such a relationship. In other words, even if you don't take the COVID-19 vaccine, you still have a 0.01 to 0.04% chance of developing Bell's palsy anyway, every year. Myth number five, mRNA vaccines will alter our DNA and make humans genetically modified organisms. Genetic modification involves the deliberate insertion or integration of foreign DNA into the nucleus of a human cell. mRNA vaccines simply do not do that. The nucleus is fully enclosed by a protective membrane that the mRNA cannot cross. mRNA from the vaccine simply teaches our cells how to make a harmless piece of the coronavirus spike protein, then the mRNA is destroyed by the cell. This spike protein primes our immune system to recognize and fight off the coronavirus if it comes around in the future. Smoking will alter your DNA. Even sunlight can alter your DNA. But mRNA vaccines will not. Myth number six. Since the COVID-19 survival rate is so high, I don't need a vaccine. Most persons recover from COVID-19, but the estimated 99% survival rate or 1% mortality rate would still lead to a massive number of deaths if the disease was left to spread unchecked. For example, in the U.S. population of roughly 328 million people, over 3 million people would die. By the way, in December of 2020, COVID-19 was ranked as the leading cause of death in the United States, surpassing deaths due to heart disease or cancer. And this does not include the many people who survive, but develop severe complications and need to be hospitalized. This public health crisis is overwhelming our healthcare system and placing significant stress on healthcare workers and their families. It's upsetting me in my home, girl, because we feel like we're damn. Additionally, the disease can damage the lungs, heart, brain, and cause long-term health problems. So even if COVID-19 doesn't make you very sick, you could pass it on to someone else who might be more severely affected. Myth number seven, several vaccine trial participants died as a result of taking the COVID-19 vaccines. Tens of thousands of people have received COVID-19 vaccines in clinical trials, and so far the vaccine appears to be safe and the benefits outweigh the risks. Moderna's 30,000 participant clinical trial had one death in just the placebo group. That's a control group that did not receive the vaccine. Six people died in Pfizer's clinical trial of almost 44,000 participants two in the group that received the vaccine, and four that did not receive the vaccine. The two vaccine group deaths were in persons older than 55, caused by cardiac arrest and arteriosclerosis. No patients died as a direct result of receiving COVID-19 vaccines during clinical trials. At this point, the COVID-19 disease is much more likely to harm and kill people than a vaccine. By the way, if you think that COVID-19 is no worse than the seasonal flu, Keep in mind that COVID-19 killed more Americans in one year than the flu did over the last nine seasons. Myth number eight, the COVID-19 vaccine was developed as a way to control the general population through either microchip tracking or nanotransducers. Firstly, nanotechnology is essentially the study and application of extremely small things. You might be familiar with prefixes like centi and milli. Nano just means really small or one billionth to be exact. It refers to the very small fats called lipid nanoparticles that are used in the vaccine. They are super tiny droplets of fat, not tiny computers or microchips. If we just inject mRNA on its own, our bodies would break it down before it could enter our cells. So it's encapsulated by lipid nanoparticles which shield the mRNA and help it get taken up by our cells. To be clear, do you want a vaccine so that you can implant microchips into people? No, there's no connection between any of these vaccines and any tracking type thing at all. I don't know where that came from. Myth number nine, the vaccine will cause severe side effects in most people. Safety data from nearly 40,000 vaccinated individuals tell us that many people will have mild brief side effects like a sore arm, a short fever, fatigue, or muscle aches, similar to what we see with the influenza vaccine. Generally, side effects are more likely to occur after the second vaccine dose. Remember, these symptoms are actually kind of a good thing because they mean that your immune system is responding to the vaccine and creating antibodies to protect you against COVID-19. In case you're wondering, safety reports for the phase 3 data have been peer-reviewed, meaning that the data were carefully scrutinized by experts in the field to ensure scientific quality. A few persons may have a more severe side effect, 
like a very high fever or anaphylaxis, especially for persons who have a history of severe allergic reactions. Myth number 10, COVID-19 mRNA vaccines are made using aborted fetuses. Y'all, the Pfizer and Moderna mRNA vaccines do not use cell lines that originated from fetal tissue taken from the body of an aborted baby at any stage of design, development, or production. There are other vaccine candidates for COVID-19, like AstraZeneca's, that do use a human fetal cell line that was derived from an elective abortion in the 1970s. These cells have been replicated for many generations in the lab and have been used over the years for developing vaccines against several diseases, like measles. Though these cells are used for developing the vaccine, note that no cells of any kind are a part of AstraZeneca's final vaccine formulation. Myth number 11. I already had COVID-19, so I won't benefit from the vaccine because I'm already immune. Most patients develop effective, neutralizing antibodies after having COVID-19, but not all patients do. Getting COVID-19 might offer some short-term natural protection or immunity from reinfection, but it's not yet clear how long this protection lasts. The level of immunity following a previous infection can also vary greatly from person to person. In comparison, a vaccine is a standard dose that ensures everyone gets the same exposure, which should lead to more reliable immunity. Vaccination gives your immune system a head start. It's a way for your body to build protective immunity without having to get very sick first. When people who've already had COVID-19 get vaccinated, their immunity is effectively topped up, meaning they're hopefully protected for longer. So even if you've already had COVID-19, experts recommend that you still get the vaccine to ensure that you're protected against potentially severe medical complications. Myth number 12. Now that we have vaccines, the pandemic will be over very soon. Okay, this one I wish was true, but unfortunately it's going to take a long time for us to vaccinate enough people to really see the cases dropping. About 70 to 85% of the population needs to be either vaccinated or infected to achieve what's called herd immunity, which is the point at which the disease is no longer likely to spread. But just letting the virus run through the population to achieve herd immunity is not a winning strategy. Viruses mutate by nature, so more hosts, aka infected humans, means more opportunities for the virus to mutate to worse strains. There's early evidence that Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine is effective against the two new coronavirus variants. But even a vaccine with high efficacy in clinical trials will have a small impact if only a few people end up getting it. Immunizing most of the population will help reduce the chances of the virus mutating significantly. But companies can only make so many doses at a time, so vaccines are being distributed in phases with priority given to those in greatest need. For now, we should all continue to help slow the spread of the virus by wearing a mask, washing our hands, and practicing physical distancing.